Where's Matt been for the last few days? Well, the first thing is, I'm still doing my English stuff. I've got loads of it to do this week, um, but I just don't have the time. There's some stuff going on. I'm supposed to be helping somebody with in the US at the minute as well. Um, but there's other stuff here that has become a bit more of a priority. Um, purely because I may be able to kickstart some of the income in Spain very soon. Today I'm going over to Elche uh, here in Spain because we're picking up a big um, RUV as you call it in the US uh, mobile home as we call it in the UK. Um, we're going to be putting that up for sale as soon as it's been picked up so I'm over there doing the review for it uh, we've got 10 pallets of stuff at an auction house which we're going over there today as well because we're going to start recovering some of the stuff from the auction uh, for another venture um, we're looking at getting on Amazon we're looking at getting at eBay we're looking at um, maybe even open a small store here um, but we'll probably start with doing the auctions, uh, not the auctions, the market stalls. So we're looking at doing a couple of markets a week and seeing how it sells. You know, if there's an interest there. Now, the reason this is sort of relevant is there's currently about £40,000 worth of stock. Um, a lot of it's gone straight into the auction because it offloads in a in about a month. It's a bit slow going, which is why we need to look at these other options. Um, the guy I deal with has the cash flow to make it much bigger, but this is what I, I was discussing this with somebody the other day about another product um, where somebody wants something manufactured in China, and I was saying, well, it only works if you've got the network. And this other guy hasn't got the network because you need to be able to push this stuff. And this is where we're at now. Because if I can get things moving here in this local area through the markets, um, it means that I could go to somebody, look, you're in Mercia, you're a couple of hours south of me. This stuff sells. Get yourself a market store and we'll supply you. Same as if somebody's up in Benidorm. Here, this stuff sells. Get yourself a stall. It will sell itself. Because How do I know? We're doing it ourselves. And we could actually set up a few stalls up and down various locations until we get to the point where we can actually open our own warehouse and distrib distribution network and expand it out. Because some products are easy sells, some are not. Um, this is where the network's important. For example, we have Family Guy t-shirts. Um, what sort of quantities? Well, just on this last load, there's 250. Uh, we've also got several hundred. Um, what's that? The Sons of Anarchy t-shirts. We've also got a mix of sun creams. We've got a mix of... Um, cards and uh, the cards I think are going to be ideal for eBay um, because of the price we pay for them the pallet value is about a million pounds if you can actually split them up and sell them um, we're not well it'd be nice if we got a million pounds out of a pallet but the reality is for the price they sell online there'll be a slow seller um, but we'd get the profit back within probably probably two months just on eBay um, this, but we'll also do the same on Amazon and then we do the same in the market store you're sort of filtering it through the whole system so it offloads quite quickly because um, obviously that is on the retail set um, but also we can do wholesale because with nearly a million cards um, we're not going to sell a million cards <laughs> but if we can actually find maybe 10, 20 different places that can take some of our stock 
it's a pretty good deal. Um, this is what I've been working on this week. Um, we've also got some other stuff related to computers. Um, because I'm pretty good with computers, to be honest. And what I would say is I can get pallet loads of laptops. Um, they're returns, which means oh, I have to sit there and go through them all, check check the what's wrong with them, then do the old patch up job of take the hard drive out of this one, put the memory in that one, etc, etc, until I get a load working. But I will also add, I don't need to fix four out of an entire pallet load. Now the odds on just four working is pretty slim. But then when you factor in the memory, the hard drives, and then splitting it all down into bits that are sellable, then suddenly it's quite a profitable little venture. So there's that going on as well. When things seem quiet and quiet when I'm not doing anything, it's normally because I'm very busy. <laughs> it's actually the reverse. If there's not a lot going on on YouTube, it means I'm actually out and about doing stuff. Um, I've also got three apartments and a villa I'm dealing with this week. Uh, each apartment's worth about 200,000 euros. The villa's worth about 350,000. Um, why am I telling you this? Well, the fact is, I only sell one of the four, and that's my income covered for the entire 2016. And this is the point here. It's all about networking. Am I good at selling property? The answer is no. Do I know people that are good at selling property? The answer is yes. I've got people that are already willing and capable of diverting some customers to actually go and look at them. Why? Because the commission rates would be better working with me because it's outside of their normal business. What I mean is these are private sales. Private sale means that you don't have to pay your boss. Private sale means it doesn't go through the real estate agent, it goes through me directly. Um, so from that point of view, we just split the commission off because there's no there's no person sitting at the top that owns the actual estate agent, which gets me to another point. I've got another estate agent I'm meeting this week as well <laughs> uh, because I want to look at marketing their stuff. There's a lot of properties in Spain. I think Spain is the third um, biggest location for new properties for selling and buying um, in Europe. Why, when there's such a slump? Well, the fact is the properties are still cheap. In Worcester, last time I looked, getting an apartment, a one bedroom little crappy place was about £100,000. Here in Spain, getting a three bedroom flat in the, the town I'm in, which is a pretty desirable location, um, in the fact that it's good for tourists as well as people that are here full time, um, you're looking at about half that. You're talking £50,000, sometimes even lower. If you go into Torreveja, you can get some. Uh, like a one bedroom apartment, even cheaper. You can get a one bedroom apartment up the road here um, if you shop around for 20 odd thousand. Why? Well, the, the banks only want to recover their costs. So there's a lot of properties that are available for sale. They may not advertise for sale, but they are available um, because the bank doesn't care about the debt as long as their debt is covered. Um, it's the same in the UK, you know, this is why you pay your deposit when you're getting a house because the bank's only interested in recovering what it's invested. It doesn't care if you lose your investment, that's not their problem. Um, so there is some good deal to be had, this is why it's a good investment. Also there's a lot of Russian money coming here and money from other areas because obviously out of Russia a lot of stuff can sit here and nobody even know where it exists. I know a friend of mine sold 19 houses to people from India. There's also houses which have been purchased from people from the Middle East because people are embezzling money. I wouldn't say it's embezzling. I would say they're um, 
investing offshore from them wherever they're from. They're taking the money and investing in stuff that can sit here. Is it a good investment? I would say it depends what you're doing. Um, property rentals here, you're not going to get rich, but they'll pay for the house over a period of time. Um, that's why the property is pretty good. This is why, you know, people are on about, oh, what about the economy? I don't think it really affects the economy. This entire coast only relies on tourism. Troy Becher come up the worst in a survey recently on employment wages and high unemployment. I'm not sure what they based this statistic on though, because it was based on the number of people there. Then I'm not surprised because most of the people are retired. <laughs> um, because they're on a pension. So obviously their monthly income will be low, but also the as a community, there are a large quantity of it. Um, what, what am I talking about? Well, you're probably talking at least 50% of the population are retired. So statistically speaking, you've got 50% of the population on a state pension probably. It's probably only about maybe 10% on a better pension than a state pension. So they're on a low pension and they're living there. So statistically, 50% of the population is on a low wage. Um, but they're not actually on a wage, on a pension. So I'm not sure where the statistics come from. But they would explain why that happens. But I do know in this area, some people are earning about 700 euros a month as their average wage. Um, which is another reason I'm here. If I went to Madrid um, or Barcelona, it would cost me at least three times as much in rent. Um, but then the energy bills are normally higher as well. So you're talking way over a thousand a month before you even factor in your food and other costs. Is there job opportunities? Of course there's job opportunities. But at the same time, we don't want to live in a city either. That's why I like the coast. Because it's if we can hit, hit that 1,600 euros a month. Um, now, I want to state this thing because I... So many people are so picky on YouTube at the moment. Um, the 1600 is to deal with the paperwork processing. 1600 is the recommended for a family of four for reaching the minimum tariff for immigration. We don't actually need 1600s financially uh, because that is based nationwide <laughs> we're like i said we're on the coast we do not need that amount of money our rents like a third of what some of these other people are paying um but what i want to say is reaching that 1600 we would actually be banking at least 600 a month um as extra cash now the good thing in spain is they do have peer-to-peer -peer investments here as well um so I would actually take it from there and put it into peer-to-peer -peer lending. Um, I'd have to look at what it would really cost me though, tax-wise, um, whether I run it as a business or run it as whatever. Why do I do peer-to-peer -peer stuff? Well, the thing is, if I do the market stuff, I'm going to be busy doing that. The peer-to-peer -peer stuff is it's making you money 24-7. And once you start building up your nest eggs and you just put in new investments to roll it, uh, rather than it just sitting in the bank gaining an interest that's pretty worthless, worthless it might be picking up 6 to 10% interest um, just by other people borrowing it. Um, makes more sense <clears throat> because this is the point of rolling the money. Keep it, keep it earning. I've got money in the UK doing it now. Um, but if I can get that going and, and then probably invest in a few properties here, not this year, unless things start to move rapidly. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I aim to do, is get things set up here. But the other thing with the properties, this is where you've got to be very careful, is if you're doing invest in property, check how much your costs are going to be per year. If you're doing holiday rentals, they're chasing for tax, although I'm not sure how well they're chasing it. Um, 
suppose you've got to look at the fact that if people are doing maintenance on these places, how much is it really costing you to run the property every year? If people are, um, we've got the maintenance, you've got your cleaning between each tenant. So if you're doing a holiday rentals, that's 50 euros a week, roughly. Uh, every time a tenant changes, it's 50 euros to have the place clean. So there's extra cost there. If you're doing this holiday rental and you're not doing all the crap yourself, you've got costs in there that could easily eat into your profit margin. Because if you have, if you have three properties, let's say you've got three properties and you're paying 50 euros a week for the cleans, that's 150 euros a week just in cleans, which is 600 euros a month in real money, which is nearly enough to pay somebody full time uh, to be in Spain. <laughs> Stupid, but it's true. Um, but there's lots of people that will do these cleans for you. But my, the way I look at it, if I had like five to ten places and they just like needed the cleans and whatever, whether they're mine or somebody else's, I'd do that full time. I'll be honest. What? Doing an hour, an hour a week in each one. I don't mind. That that's, that's, this is the thing about flexibility. Um, I don't mind sitting in the boardrooms, but also I don't mind, even if I had to, deal with the cleaning properties. Why? Because it's all money. It's all money. And this is why I say to people, never never get worried about what you're doing. It's, it's money. This whole thing about people being attached to a specific um, role in life is just crazy. Um, it's how I got into facilities management and maintenance. Uh, people sat there in an office earning 14,000 a year looking down at me that was there to deal with their maintenance. I'm earning 75,000 a year because while they're doing their nine till five, I've already been out since seven in the morning, um, done a full day, then go home, do the normal stuff people do. At two in the morning, I'm out dealing with robberies at Matland, Sainsbury's, etc. Getting four hours at double time for every call. When you have the wet weather, I could do 16 call outs in one weekend. Um, what's the point of that? Well, just do the maths yourself. 16, 16 stores at four hours each, um, a double pay, how many hours is that? I'm not telling you how much I was earning, but uh, I also did locksmithing on top of that. So because I was out in the middle of the night anyway, I would often just do a locksmith call as well. So I used to earn an extra seven, eight hundred pounds a week in locksmith calls on my private ventures. Bearing in mind, I had a second vehicle for that. I made that very clear. I didn't use the company vehicle. Um, but the reality is, that's how I got into maintenance. It made good money. It still makes good money. There was a guy, I was sorting his wages out a while back. Um, over a period of three months, he'd accumulated £12,000 worth of overtime. Um from seven day working. Uh, did he do seven days a week? Of course he didn't. But the problem is he was in a environment where they would quite happily let them, let him know if people were looking at his paperwork, um, turning up on site, etc. Uh, very difficult to remove, but the reality is he was earning an extra 12,000 within three months on top of his normal salary. That's why people are in maintenance. Um, there's a lot of money in it. A lot of money. Uh, this is why I like contracting over 9 to 5s. Because the contracting is where the cash is. Uh, doing surveying for housing associations. They're on a 37.5 hour week contract. Which is why they never get anything done. They, they have a backlog of... Um, calls because they don't have enough time in the week to actually sort it out so when I come in I'm instantly in a 60 hour week obviously 
I'm getting a premium rate on my hourly rate anyway. But then I'm getting paid for every hour working. So if I double my hours up, hey ho, I'm quids in. Which is why two, three months a year is all I need to work when I do that, if I did nothing else. But this is this is another thing I want to talk about. I'll do it in the next video. I'll explain something on the next video. Uh, but this video has gone on a while, 20 minutes. This is probably the longest one for a while. That's where I'll be. Thanks for watching.